Hey, what's up? So uh, I've been playing around with a inverter power supply out of a uh, Panasonic microwave. Uh, you know, a lot of you are familiar with the uh, MOTs, as some people refer to them, or microwave oven transformers. They're uh, big and clunky. They're great to play around with. Um, one of the disadvantages of them is that they will go into an overcurrent condition very easily. So uh, even if you don't have anything loaded on the output, so on this uh, inverter setup, it operates more efficiently, it's very light, and uh, also it won't go into an overcurrent condition so easily. So um, There was a YouTube user, uh, his name on here, uh, Paulton M. He had actually gone through and observed the uh, input conditions of these uh, enable lines here, so uh, or control lines. So. Uh, I followed his specifications and to, did my own little turn on it. Um, sorry for the shakiness of the video. This is recorded on a, a tablet, not a potato. Anyway, uh, so you've got a few inputs into it. Of course, you've got the uh, main lines coming in from the uh, outlet. And as far as I've been able to uh, tell, uh, their polarity actually doesn't matter. It just it gets rectified for both the uh, PWM, or sorry, excuse me, the, um, the main circuit that uh, rectifies to go to the uh, transformer and also it gets rectified going to the control circuitry side of things so uh, it doesn't matter your polarity on there um, you have these control lines so uh, according to him which apparently works uh, brown is ground uh, this is an able line that orange line is um, I or he said that uh, you can actually use just a 1k ohm resistor uh, bringing it to ground so that's what I've done over here I've actually got two 2k ohm resistors that are in parallel to give me 1k ohm total and uh, that works fine for the enable line uh, it's got some kind of weird signal on it but this works so then on the yellow line that's your signal line that dictates the actual power that the um, uh, transformer can output. So that's a really great feature of this is that you can actually change the current that is available based on a PWM of the uh, flyback transformer that's internal to it. Uh, so um, it outputs uh, open circuit somewhere around 6 kV uh, which is a lot of voltage. <laughs> if you uh, actually tie it into something to put a load onto it, it gets more around the uh, 4 kV range. And uh, it's varying between 100 and 400 milliamps. So uh, whenever you first turn it on, it has to be at 43% uh, 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 pulse width of the you know, total uh, signal, so 43% duty cycle. Uh, and then from there, you can take it up uh, to a higher uh, range. So uh, what I've done is I actually wrote an Arduino sketch. The original user had built a... Uh, PWM circuit based on a 555 timer, actually a 556 timer it looked like, so you could get into a uh, stable uh, pulse width mode. So uh, what I actually did, these little uh, Arduinos, I got them for about f uh, 3 or $4 each, so it was really easy because I didn't have to go and cut the board for the circuit or try to prototype it or anything of that sort. So I went that route. Um, and what I did on the sketch was I wrote it in microseconds because uh, based on milliseconds I could do it. It's just that I don't get the uh, resolution that I would like to have as far as the power. And uh, also I needed to calibrate it, uh, it, you know, vary it a little bit in microseconds in order to get a true 220 hertz signal off of it. So, uh, and I tested that using my uh, oscilloscope that I've got available here. So, uh, anyway, the uh, sketch here it starts uh, in a uh, about 25 percent uh, duty cycle or you know quarter uh, pulse width mode then after it satisfies a certain number of iterations by this iterations indexer here then it goes into the else statement which is um, a three-quarter uh, duty cycle uh, waveform so later on what I'll do is I'll tie that into either a quadrature encoder uh, to turn up the uh, signal or I will tie that into a uh, potentiometer to change that. But I'll go ahead and fire it up here. You've got your main circuit. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. And then you have just a 5, or five volt wall wart that uh, powers the Arduino. And once that power is on you will see in the electroscope here 
the foil move just a little bit. There we go. It'll move whenever I turn it off too. So uh, it's not moving very much for 6KB. Uh, the reason for that is that this is actually aluminum foil instead of gold foil. Uh, I'm actually surprised that the 6 kilovolts that are in this you know, high frequency um, inverter are not interfering with the camera. You may get it on your end. Uh, yeah, it's a fun little circuit. Um, I can definitely smell the uh, ozone coming off of that. Um, very capable. I'm going to use it in my uh, oh goodness, my sputtering chamber. Uh, it'll be very useful there because it's so easy to blow through your target material while uh, sputtering because it does build up a lot of heat. So by using this, I can dial back the amount of current available, well, you know, as a variable function rather than just trying to uh, run it through a uh, ballast of some sort. Sorry. Hard to find my words today. So, uh, yeah, fun little circuit. Just be really careful with this thing because it's got enough juice in it to kill a horse. So, keep on hacking.